Starting up uh, the final learning objective, how do we use all this financial information, this financial statement? We have an income statement, we have a balance sheet, we have a cash flow, statement of cash flows, now we have all these ratios. How do we use this information to our greatest advantage? Well, a lot of times uh, this, all of this data is used internally for performance evaluation, so someday your raise may be determined by return on equity or net return on sales. So uh, executives, the president, CEO, and the board will use these uh, ratios to evaluate your performance in the company. We look at these ratios and, and financial statements for future planning. We're going to get into that in session number four, um, where we use ratios going forward. And if, in other words, if we have this net return on sales this past quarter, we can do it again next quarter, kind of thinking goes on. Uh, we look at comparing divisions. So this division, division A versus division B, is one accretive to earnings, one uh, not doing so well relative to Division B, not doing so well relative to Division A, uh, or doing better. So we look at uh, this on a comparison basis inside the company and also salary decisions. Uh, as I said, externally, we look at evaluate, we, we might evaluate a supplier to see how uh, sound they are with short-term solvency. Are they able to stay in business and keep the supply chain fulfilled for us, very important to us. So we look at their financial statements to see if they're strong financially and will be a, a, a formidable supplier for our uh, goods, and, goods and services that we need to succeed ourselves. Uh, how are our competitors doing? So a lot of comparison goes on within industry and across industries with aspirin companies. Who's doing the best in inventory management and receivable management and cash flow? Uh, we want to know who that aspirin company is and then uh, mimic them and find out what they're doing better than we are and the way we can do that is by looking at these ratios. Uh, if we go to acquire another firm, again, are these accretive to earnings? Is this company going to be help our earnings out, going to dilute our earnings? What are they going to do? How are their ratios and how do they stack up against ours? Do they have positive net income, positive profitability ratio, or will they uh, drag us down? Is their debt too large? What's their debt to equity ratio? So a lot of these ratios are used once again when we look at acquisitions. And other outside parties look at us. Creditors might look at us, potential investors in our company, look at our ROE. What kind of return on investment will we provide? What is our PE ratio um, relative to others in the industry? And how do we measure up? So outside investors and analysts will use these ratios and the financial statements to judge us. Uh, we can look at all of these things on a time trend basis. Uh, how have we done over time, over the last 10 years? Have our sales gone up? Have they gone down? Has it been a bumpy road? Um, what's our cash position doing? For instance, Apple Computer, another example of Apple, but they're constantly building their cash short up now around $40 billion. You can do a lot with $40 billion. Uh, so we can look at this over time. Was it that good 10 years ago? And where will it be in the future? We're going to get into that in session four. And also peer group. How are we doing relative to our peers? We can look uh, by SIC code, which is now called NAICS code, North American Industry Classification System. Uh, replace the SIC codes in 1997, and we can look at how our peers are doing within our standard industrial classification. Um, the company named Robert Morris Associates, now called Risk Management Associates, puts all these ratios together uh, within peer groups, within SIC codes, NAICS codes, and uh, we're able to see again how we're doing within our industry. Uh, Risk Management Associates puts that all together by size of company. So small companies, medium-sized companies, large companies within our industry is all put together by RMA. Um, lots of possible complications. There's no underlying theory to tell us and no benchmarks. Uh, we kind of have to look at our industry. Uh, some of these ratios are indeed industry dependent and we have to know what, how our industry is doing uh, relative to us. And uh, other than a few guidelines, again, it's, it kind of depends on uh, what is a good ratio and what is a not so good ratio. In summary, we, by uh, th this time, you should be able to uh, do several things, uh, having looked at and read uh, s chapter three and session three. Understand what a cash flow is and also uh, the statement of cash flows is the most important of the three financial statements. Uh, be able to read them and understand how they're compiled and where you get the information. Uh, learning objective number two, how to standardize a financial statement. So to standardize an income statement, I divide everything by sales, and to standardize a balance sheet, I divide everything by total assets. 
uh, ratio analyses. You should know what the key ratios are in the five categories we broke them down into and uh, look at some mnemonics. Remember those mnemonics to be able to calculate those ratios for life. Uh, fourth learning objective is to know what the DuPont identity is, and it's a way to uh, break the return on equity equation down into manageable parts and to be able to increase some of those parts to affect your uh, return on equity equation uh, within your company. And finally, how do we use this financial statement information to our advantage? Time trend analysis, peer group analysis, and using comparisons to help us understand how, just how our company is doing in the business world.